Okay, I think we most, most of us are here. Our next speaker is a renowned karaoke singer slash dancer. Jakovic van Vieren. His uh, title is Effective Leadership Communication of Quality Surveyors in South Africa. Thank you. Good afternoon and a warm welcome to everyone. Like said, my name is Jakovic van Vieren and my topic today is Effective Leadership Communication of quantity surveyors in the profession. Leadership is one of the world's oldest obsessions. So throughout history, man was obsessed with the concept of leading, motivating, and inspiring others to achieve more. This has led for a first of knowledge and have led to numerous definitions thereof. Now, leadership can be defined as the ability to create an environment for everybody is com uh, where everybody knows what contribution is expected of them, feels committed and motivated to set and achieve common goals, while others view leadership, leadership with a power relationship that, that occurs between the leader and the follower. Now, in this definition, the leader is seen to have power that he uses to effect change from the others. Now, in both definitions, um, is correct, but there is something very important missing. But it is there, but it's not stated. It's a skill that the leader uses to lead. It's communication. Now, it has been said that through effective communication, leaders lead. Without effective communication, a leader accomplishes little and is regarded as an ineffective leader. Now, that being said, it should be noted that leadership communication is essential to any firm and that communication plays a major role in the relationship between a leader and a follower. And it is not only vital in building the relationship, but it also ensures that correct information is obtained. And lastly, it also ensures that everybody understands and have the same set goals in the company. Now, looking um, for into leadership communication in a quantitative surveying profession, we can just see how one-to-one -one leadership will increase the performance of the whole team, rather than focusing on leading the whole group to a common goal. Um, it will indicate the problem areas and where development is needed and where to change one's behavior to best suit your follower. And when all members of a team are motivated, satisfied, and have a feeling of belonging, they will become an indispensable asset. Now, in our profession, limited research has been done on leadership and communication. Therefore, the objectives of the study are to determine the leadership behavior of the leader and how this will influence the communication effectiveness of the leader, and finally to see which medium of communication is used to do so. When researchers studied leadership, they have created a lot of theories and models. Now, in the past, they believed that leaders only interact with a group of people, and that the leaders will maintain their type of leadership style throughout the course of time, and lastly, that the leader's orientation being task or relationship will not change as well. Now, in the recent time, more modern theories was created, and with this, three general skills for effective leadership was proposed. They are diagnosing the situation, adapting to that situation, and, yes, effective communication. Now, these three skills form the foundation for the style approach and the leader-member exchange theory, or the LMX. Now, the style approach pays specific emphasis on the leader's behavior. It focuses on what the leader do and how they act. And what makes the, the approach more unique is that it includes the, act, includes the actions of the leader towards each of its followers. Now, leadership studied through the style approach revealed two different kinds of behavior. That is the task behavior and relationship behavior. Now, task behavioral leaders are more inclined with goal accomplishment, where relationship behavioral leaders guide their followers through a dynamic situation. What the style approach really say, is saying is that the leaders should adapt their behavior to elicit the optimal potential from each of its followers. Now, some followers may need direction, where others may need support. Therefore, the approach can be viewed like as a mirror where the leader can ask how I'm doing with this follower and he can view himself and talk to himself and see if he should change his behavior or not. 
Now, the leader member exchange theory focuses on the relationship between the leader and each of its followers. Now, depending on how well the relationship is with the leader and his followers, he will categorize the followers into either in group members or out group members. Now, I know it sounds like high school all over again with your in group and your out groups and all the clicks, clicks, and all that. But to tell you the truth, that is what makes the LMX theory great. Because if you think of it, it will make sense to describe work teams in those who contribute more and those who contribute less. Now, leaders have special relationship with some of his followers, um, those who do more and achieve more. So just like everybody else in this room, leaders pick their favorites. Now, leaders have a one-to-one -one relationship with all of its followers, as can be seen on the right and side of that figure. Now, when a follower is in the in-group, the leader will give it more responsibilities and tasks, and then will re reward it with special attention, um, like extra roles, and this will give the, the follower opportunity to grow and excel in his profession. Now, out-group members, on the other hand, are treated according to the formal contract. They only do what is expected of them and do nothing more. They are more task-orientated, as you can say. Now, believe me or not, leaders spend more time on communicating than on any other uh, task. Now, communication in the past was seen as a transaction, a one-way transaction, I might add, um, where, the lead, where the receiver has to work alone to decode the message that was sent to him to get all the information. We can view this much like as handing him a present, and when he opens the present, it's a 10,000-piece jigsaw puzzle that he has to put together alone to get the information that the sender wants them to have. Now, this is where two communication models were identified. The first one is the linear model, which is the normal the sender encoding the message, sending it through a medium, and the receiver decoding the message to get, to get the message and all the information. Now, this is quite simple because it happens in one straight line. Now, everything that is simple, there is something else that makes it complicated. That is noise that makes it hard to receive all the information received uh, all the information sent by the, se by the sender. Now, this is where the convergence model will be more applicable. Now, the convergence model of communication stressed that communication is a two-way transaction where the sender and the receiver needs to work together to create meaning. Now, to achieve effective communication, the message sent must be the message received. Now, the convergence model is this can be viewed as a never-ending inward spiral till there is a meeting of minds. Sorry. Now, quantitative research was conducted for the study with means of questionnaires. Now, the questionnaire consisted of five sections, namely the demographics, the style approach, the leader member exchange, theory seven, uh, effective communication, and communication method questionnaire. Now, these were questionnaires was loaded up to a web survey and a link was emailed to Quantity Surveys in South Africa addressing them personally. It was also uploaded to the ASAQS website for anybody to answer there. And the responses was analyzed. 63 questionnaires were successfully completed, which gave me a roughly a 7% response rate. The demographics of the respondents uh, 56 males and only 7 females contributed to the study, with an average age category between 40 and 49 years old, which can be viewed as mature. 52% uh, have more than 20 years' experience, and 56% 50, of them are top-level top, are top leaders, and they can be regarded as leaders in their profession. And only 59% worked in the public sector. Now, the style approach was used to indicate the, be the leader's behavior. The questionnaire consisted of tw 20 questions, which then scored the leader's task behavior and relationship <coughs> behavior. Now, the scores range from 24 to 50, with 50 being the highest, and, f and with a mean score of 40 43 for relationship and 42 for task behavior. And this is regarded as high. Now, looking at the graph, we can see that 46% received a score between 45 and 50, which is regarded as very high. And, but still, the relationship behavior, which is the red, is still higher than the task behavior, which is indicated by the blue. Now, when moving to the moderately high category, categories, this changes. Now, this indicates that leaders that scored in the higher categories are more 
or categories are able to change their behavior to suit their followers' best needs. And in the leaders in the lower categories are more focused, more focused on the task at hand than building relationship with their followers. Now, to determine the perception of the leader towards each of its followers, the leader member exchange seven questionnaire was used. That consists of seven questions, stating a scenario, and then asking the leader to score each of them individually. Now, this was analyzed to categorize the, categorized, sorry, the, the, the followers in either in-group members or in out-group members. Now, 48% of the respondents received a score between 25 and 29 which is regarded as high. Then a total of 45 respondents received a score that's showing that they have a strong relationship with their follower, which they can be categorized as in-group members. Now, out-group members, now the out-group members, only 2% of the respondents were clearly identified as them. Now, a communication effective questionnaire was designed along with a communication method questionnaire. Now, this was used to indicate the effectiveness of the leader's communication skills. Now, the respondent scores range from 62 to 100%, um, with a mean score of 89% effectiveness. Now, this showing that quantity, surve quantity surveyors know how to communicate effectively. Matching the effectiveness, we can see that the method most commonly used is face-to-face -face communication. And that is followed by electronic communication, which is your email, WhatsApp, SMSs, and then by telephonic communication. Now, all respondents was categorized in the moderately, moderate to very high for communication effectiveness. Now, effectiveness um, for a communication effective questionnaire, and that they use the two most effective methods to communicate, which is spoken and written communication. Now, you may ask, what does this all mean? Now, the style approach indicated to us that leaders are more relationship oriented and they have the ability to change their behavior to, to, from task behavior to relationship behavior when needed by the follower. And that the leader exchange theory indicated that leaders tend to, sh that tend to show to be more relationship, le re uh, sorry, leaders that tend to show more relationship behavior have more in-group members and that uh, allows them to elicit more optimal, the optimal potential from the follower. Now, and the communication effectiveness showed us that all of this were achieved by great communication skills of the leader. Now, in conclusion, research showed us that communication differentiates leaders that are effective and those that are ineffective. Of the three general skills that the leader must have to be effective, the quantity surveyor possesses all three of them. As I said, the quantity survey tend to show to be more relationship oriented than task oriented, and that there are a positive correlation between all of these theories. And the impact of in group members in a firm must not be ignored, as they are essential for the rapid growth thereof. Now, what should leaders do? Well, leaders should become more aware of their followers' needs and they should adapt accordingly. They must improve their communication skills to ensure. That there, that there is more effective communication, and they must identify the outgroup members in the team before it's too late and change them into the in-group members to, to get more potential from them. And in-group members are the potential futures, are the potential leaders, future leaders of the profession. So we should rather view them as an investment of a lifetime. Thank you for attending my presentation. Any questions is welcome. Questions? So, I thought uh, there's always a classic question that get, gets asked around leadership theories. Yeah. Are leaders born or are they, or are they bred? Well, leaders are bred. If you if look at royalty, we get the royal race if, from, let's say, the kings. If, they, if it was true that they could be born, you would get all the kings, they would, they would, they would populate more leaders. They would, they, you know, if I can put it that way, I don't know. They will breed more leaders then. <laughs> and then you have the royal race of leaders. But like we see in the world now, that is not true. So leaders are not born. They, you can create them. They, anybody can be a leader. You just have to see it and take it on. Roy? Thanks for this. Uh, 
Google, it's certainly the experience, different communication methods, leadership styles here amongst different sizes of firms? No, I've looked at some firms are from two person to 300 uh, people in the firm, and most of them all have the same answers for communication and scored it. So the size of the firm <coughs> didn't actually play any role into the results. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. It was an excellent presentation. I just wonder if you can teach leadership. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a very simple answer, but I want to <laughs> because it depends on personality. Yes, it, is. it does. But everybody, I, I see everybody as potential leaders. Um, you get leaders that lead from behind, and although those that say they are followers, but they're actually leading from behind. They influence the people on horizontal axis and not up and down communication. They are still leaders. They, are not, they don't have the higher uh, position than other leaders to change their perception and giving what they are thinking into their minds. But they're still leaders. Everybody is leaders, actually, on their own field and terms. So actions speak louder than words. Yes. And role models are very important. Yes. You didn't say anything about role models. I don't look at role models. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just again a comment. Uh, um, uh, referring to one of the previous um, speakers as well. If the uh, percentage of Practices of QS practices in South Africa are so predominantly one man businesses or small practices. There must be a great potential of dormant leadership in the conservation profession because you don't know because all they're doing is leading themselves. Uh, these people, and you don't know how many of them are really the leaders, and there might be a great potential there. Yeah. Um, and then the only time they get the opportunity of leading is sometimes in multidisciplinary um, uh, circumstances and it might be an interesting thing to examine uh, what the um, the feeling is about QS is fulfilling the principal agency roles in, in, in the chapter like in the JPCC uh, and do uh, QS has made good principal agents yeah. and that, that's the one of the basic things they get the opportunity yeah, I'm totally agree with that. Questions from the audience? Great. Yeah. Yeah.